Okay, we're ready. Good evening. Uh, this is going to be a presentation um, using Community Builder tools to implement uh, small use cases or large use cases without coding or with minimum coding. So I hope everybody's having fun. This is the second day of uh, JN Beyond. Uh, people that are not here will be able to view this online because of the sponsorship. And who, we, who, who are we? Basically, uh, there are two people from the Community Builder team here, myself and Beat. And I will be presenting, I will be presenting this uh, presentation. And there's also a couple of presentations tomorrow. Uh, one is a lightning talk, why GPL is good for sellers also, and another one is geared on MySQL database optimizations uh, that BAT's going to be giving. Okay, a little agenda just for the people viewing the, uh, the presentation online. Uh, basically, we're going to be looking at uh, We've all basically constructed work cases, uh, work cases, uh, uh, websites, and each website is a different use case. No matter how similar the uh, the site, there's going to be a twist and turn uh, that will involve the developer actually trying to implement something a little out of the ordinary. And in many cases, uh, people either hack, hack not uh, in the uh, security threat way, but hack in terms of actually finding a specific area in existing code and start, start making changes on that. Uh, and the reason people do that, we'll see, is because there's a lot of overhead in coding things right. <laughs> uh, and we're going to be looking at the Community Builder framework and how it helps you actually implement these use cases with no or very minimum coding. And we're talking, we'll be talking about the available solutions that are in place, and basically we'll be presenting a couple, uh, three or four of these solutions with use case examples. Now, this is the uh, principle of uniqueness. Uh, everything is unique. Always remember, you're unique just like everybody else. Okay, so no matter what website you make, it'll be unique. Even if you make 10 websites for schools, Every single one will have a different twist that you will have to uh, be able to satisfy. Now, just to lay, to lay down the stage, basically, it's a hacking versus programming principle. I mean, those of us uh, who have developed extensions realize that uh, you know, implementing the key concept is really quick. But uh, being able to handle the supporting areas around uh, the presentation layer, the exceptions, the testing, and everything else, and the maintainability and upgradability, that caused a lot of overhead. And that's why uh, a lot of, uh, many times are developers that basically, uh, website developers that basically bypass the, the process, find a specific place in your code, they make some changes, they satisfy the customer, but they might end up messing up the customer later on because at the next update, upgrade of a website or the extension that the person has hacked, the hack will be overwritten. Usually things are not documented and so on. So uh, these are just some examples uh, and, uh, uh, and what the difference between a programmer and a hacker would be. And my definition is basically a hacker wants to satisfy the end customer, the end client, as quickly as possible and with the least amount of effort. Uh, and they don't really care what happens a year down the road. If they're around, they'll probably pay it again a year down the road. If they're not, <laughs> somebody else will have to uh, deal with the problem. So 90% of the code, this is just ad hoc definition, is overhead. I mean, think about it. You have to handle the input. You have to handle exception, ha you know, ha exception handling, special cases. You know what happens if this happens <laughs> in the input and so on. Hackers don't think about this. They usually just satisfy the, cu the customer. And the customer says, yeah, that's what I want to do. It works. And they move on. 
uh, language readiness. You know, if I mean, if you look at the presentation uh, FAF, I mean, to write this uh, one a single Joomla plugin, you might need six or seven files. Even the hello, the hello world plugin, six or seven files. So there's a lot of overhead to doing things right. Uh, however, let's just assume that what if we could easily interject our use case logic in the right place without modifying existing code and with no overhead. Let's cut the chase and say, I want to do this here. What if we can do that? Well, you can. Uh, I'm not going to be going through this. I'm just putting it there for, for uh, completeness purposes. Community builder architecture is heavily trigger based. I mean, Joomla has triggers also. The community builder uh, basically takes that to a, a different level. There are triggers all over the place where you know every event is triggered before, after. Uh, you can even introduce your own special triggers if needed. Uh, and the entire architecture, all, our, all the plugins and community builder are triggering off events. So it makes things a little easy. Uh, community builder basically has a framework and there are various solutions surrounding the framework. So we have uh, profiles, of course, uh, groups. We have integrations with third-party plugins like Kunena, UDDIM, and so on. Uh, CB Connect is will link with Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, and we're extending that all the time. Activity streams. Again, all these are plugins that tie around the uh, Community Builder framework. And everything works off events, and you can extend this very easily. And what we're going to be showing, one of the, I mean, there are three or four tools basically that you could use to do this extension without really uh, investing that much in overhead. You basically concentrate on exactly what you want to do, and you do it. So the question, again, I'm, I'm showing on the left here is, what if we could easily interject our logic in the right place without modifying code. Uh, and the right side of the screen, basically, I'm outlining some of these tools that are in place right now. One of the, one, the first one is called CB Auto Actions. And what this is, uh, it's like a Swiss army knife of, of tools. Uh, it basically uh, allows you to tie into any event and interject your logic and do the specific activity you need to do. We'll go, I'll be going through lots of examples there. Uh, CB Subs is the paid subscription uh, extension of Community Builder. And it basically has two nice actions there. Uh, the SQL action, which allows you basically to execute any SQL statement when a subscription st starts or ends or whatever. And there's also a GPL URL action. Basically, you call a URL, which could be a script on the other end, send it variables and do whatever you need to do. Uh, you can create a query field, a field that basically queries your database, either an internal database, a Joomla database, or some external database, and grabs information and displays it back as a profile field in, in user profiles. And the last one's a DB lookup validation field. There are lots of cases where we want to be able to allow people to only select values in a field that are in our database. There are, think about uh, a closed registration where we basically give codes out and allow people to use those codes to go through the registration form. Okay, first of all, I'll be talking about the uh, auto actions. Okay, these are triggers. There are lots of triggers. I'm not going to go through all of them. There are, I'm just numbering things here. So, community builder has triggers, front end or back end, group jive which is the groups extension, CB subs, activity, which is an extension as a plugin of Community Builder, has its own events. Uh, privacy, the privacy plugin has events. Anti-spam is a new plugin, has events. Uh, and you can, you select the filter, the filter, you select the trigger you need for your specific use case. For example, you can select the trigger that fires right after the registration form. Okay? Uh, you Apply a conditional filter. When do you want my action to take place after this event? You might say, for example, I don't want to run this 
action if this specific field that the person has populated in the, in the registration form is 10 or is 20 or is less than something or is more than something. You can set up any criteria you want. And, and then you just choose the action you want. I'll, I'll give the list of actions. And you add your specific use case logic. And that's it. It's clean. It's maintainable. It's future proof because it's working off the community builder framework that we will maintain with backwards compatibility and so on. So there's no need to hack, basically. Here's a list of uh, action types that are available today. So we have, for example, an action type to be able to add events, new events in the activity stream. Uh, we have an, uh, an, action, an, an activity action that uh, uh, integrates with AC mailing, the newsletter extension. So you can basically say, when, when event A happens, <laughs> add this user to the specific newsletter. Or when event B happens, take the user out of the newsletter. And all these are basically very visual and very easy to do. And there's a list of things here. I mean, you can see you have GPL activities, I mean, uh, CB sub GPL activities, code activities. Basically, you can write PHP code and interject it after the event. Or you can push CSS code on your page. Or you can uh, run a jQuery uh, function or a piece of code. And I'll show a lot of examples. Uh, you, can, you can have a, a, a database query, basically, saying if something happens, I want to, I want to execute this query. And all these uh, actions basically could take information from the profile, from your site. So you basically might say, I want to call, I, I want to basically uh, add a row to an external database table, which has the user ID, the username, the email address of the, uh, of the user uh, triggering the event. And basically, it, it opens a door to thousands of integrations that you can implement relatively easy without really coding all the overhead because it, it's been done for you. And the last one, basically, I'm, I'm saying here, we're working on an ex, uh, an, another action type for CVCRM. Basically, we'll be able to uh, load the CV API and push, field, push CB data fields, for example, to the CVCRM fields. Uh, or trigger whatever we need to do on the other end. Okay, this is, I just have a list now, and I'll be switching back and forth with my uh, uh, local host here so we can see. Uh, for example, there's the activity action. Uh, let me just show you what the interface looks like because it'll be easier to understand, I think. Okay, this is the, we'll just go back. Well, it doesn't fit, huh? Okay, this is the, the auto action basically panel. And these are auto actions, which you can go here and create a new one. So, new one, the first thing it asks you is the type of action, the type of activity you want to do. So you do a drop down and you see the list I gave in the previous slide. So let's assume, uh, just out of curiosity, we want to send an email. You click on the email link. You can give it a name, okay, a description if you want, uh, the type you already selected. The trigger here, you can use the add triggers and go through the drop down and find the trigger that you really uh, need for your specific use case. So for, let's assume we want to send the mail right after profile update, for example, okay? It automatically puts the trigger here. You might, you might want to select a second trigger. You might want to fire, do the same activity depending on two triggers or three triggers and so on. Okay. So this is one thing. Uh, you could go further down, you say the access control. I usually put everyone here, everybody. It applies to, to everyone. And here's a nice conditional you can basically say, okay, uh, the, the trigger has fired, okay? But I don't want you to execute the, ac the action unless, uh, if 
uh, unless this condition is true. So I might say, for example, I only want to send this guy an email if the email address he already has, for example, contains, if it's a Gmail address, for example, out of curiosity. And you could add a, a second and a third one here and a fourth one. You could just you know, do, do the pluses here and minuses and, and get it over with. And you go down here, and it asks you a two address. You can, if you want to send this to, the same, to this person, you just use the substitution email. Hold on. OK. Subject, thank you for updating whatever. OK, and give a body. Hello. Of course, everything in here is, has substitution. So you can say, hello, first name, uh, et cetera. Okay. And you can say, if it's HTML or text mode, you can put CC, BCC, given an attachment. Uh, you can change the from address, from name. You can even change the mailer here. So you want to, for this specific mail, you might want to use SMTP and connect to uh, Google, to Gmail, and use Gmail to send this specific mailing. I'm, I'm going to give another example because we're using this on Joomlapolis <laughs> because there's a lot of cases where Gmail just automatically th thinks uh, you're spam. But if you're sending from a Gmail account, <laughs> they don't tell you a spam. So this is a, a very nice uh, use case we're, we're using. So, th this is, so this is what the interface looks like. You select your uh, action. Depending on the action you selected, you have more and more options for that specific option, for that specific action. And you just concentrate on the logic. You concentrate on the email you want out. Okay? Or you concentrate on the CSS you want to push to your registration page. And I'll give you an example of that too. Uh, and there's no, you don't have to write a plugin to tie into a trigger or anything. It's automatically there for you. And of course, you can have an action after an action after an action. You can do a series of actions on the same trigger. You might not be able, not, not be able to uh, complete the logic in one pass. You might have to do a second step and a third step and so on. But it gives you all the small building blocks to do things uh, v relatively quick and cleanly. There's no hacking here. It's clean code. It's maintainable. So it'll work. And you can just keep on using it forever. I'll show you. Yeah, I have lots of examples here. So, so we go back here. Cool. Uh, one example I have here, for example, on the right is, I mean, Community Builder has an activity stream. And there are some basic activity events that are pushed in there. So if somebody uh, updates a user profile, the event says user so-and-so updated his profile. It doesn't tell you what changed or anything. So let's assume for our specific use case, we have a community builder field that is a drop-down field that is a, a mode field, a, a mood field, sorry, a mood field that the user basically uh, specifies whether he's happy, sad, <laughs> excited, and so on. And let's assume that we want to create a new event in the activity stream when somebody changes just that mood. Okay, it's, it's relatively easy to do. So basically, <coughs> what we're saying here is if the CB mood field has changed value, because we're triggering off the profile update, okay? but we're filtering, we're, we're triggering off the update, but we're only going to do the action if there's a change in the specific CB field that's holding the mood of the user. So if there's a change here, we're basically going to uh, push the following event on the uh, activity stream. We're going to say from, this could be sad, <laughs> to, this could be happy. Okay. So we're basically pushing an event in, on the activity stream uh, for our specific use case. Now, you can imagine if you have a, a, a website that has uh, students. 
A field might be if somebody passed or failed, whatever. <laughs> and if that changes, we can say, hey, he passed or he failed. Or we might not, we, we might just filter if they passed. <laughs> it, it depends on what you want to do. AC mailing, again, just going through, I, I'm not going to go through all the cases here because there are a lot of them. I just want to make sure that we all understand the possibilities, okay? Uh, AC mailing, and I have some examples, but the result basically shows us we're concentrating on what we want to do. Okay, we find the event, we put the condition, when do we want this event to fire, and we just tell, we just tell the uh, auto action what we want to do. We want to add this person to a newsletter, subscribe this person to a newsletter, unsubscribe him, or do whatever we want. We, I mean, this specific case just has one newsletter. If I create more from AC mailing, it'll, it'll pull them in. These are just the default ones. But the idea, again, is we concentrate on the action and the logic, and we let the code for somebody else. Uh, here's another case. We, you know, there's a new uh, anti-spam plugin that we've implemented, and basically uh, you can block somebody for a specific period of time, or you can block the whole IP, or you can block the whole email domain he has. And this is a, a, a little use case. For example, let's say we have our moderators and we create a warning field in Community Builder. And the moderator can basically issue a warning to an end user. And we can say that automatically when these warnings go three, we'll block the guy for a day, for just one day. And from then on, every time there's a new warning over three, we'll block him another day. <laughs> We could create a follow-up action. If it's six, we can block the IP for a week, whatever. Uh, and this is what it would look like, for example. So we would say, basically, the top portion would be the condition. We're basically saying, if the warning field, the CV warning field, is, uh, has changed, so if this profile update actually had a change in the warning field, okay? and if, that, the, if the warning field is greater than or equal to three, so if this specific user has accumulated three warnings or more, okay. what we want to do is we want to block the user with the user ID for one day. And we actually uh, record a reason, too. We can record a reason of, of the blocking. Again, this automated, nothing. Can you imagine doing that with code? It would probably take you, uh, you know, a week to research where, where you would have to do this <laughs> and another week to implement and test. Uh, CB subs is uh, another action. Basically, you can specify, uh, you can automatically subscribe somebody to a plan, renew a plan. Uh, it's a whole set of use cases here, but you, you have to be dealing with membership sites, basically, to need this. Uh, you can, uh, one, one example I have here is you can automatically subscribe a user to a, a membership plan if they join a specific group, Jive group. So if, if I join a group for uh, music fans, I can automatically subscribe this uh, user to a, a free or a hidden plan, whatever, that is for music lovers. And this way, give them access to different areas of the site, for example. I'll just go through this first. Code action, OK. These are, uh, those of us who are a little more code oriented. I mean, we'll probably use this a lot. Uh, these are the different types of code actions we can do. We can have, we can actually push HTML to the page. We can uh, do PHP in two modes, either to be eval or the create function. For example, with CVCRM, I could actually use PHP to load the API, do whatever I need to do, and continue. Uh, JavaScript inline or URL, jQuery, CSS inline URL, you can push something to the header of the page, page title, pathway. These, there are lots of possibilities here, as you can see. Uh, this specific code action will just do a pop-up, jQuery pop-up alert. It's, it's simple, I mean, and again, it uses substitution, so you can personalize the message to the person that has the user profile. This is a, a very cool, uh, example, and it's based off a use case somebody asked on the forum, so I used it as an example. Uh, let's assume you have a registration form that you want to allow two types 
of uh, registrations. Uh, for example, you want people that are athletes to be able to register, or people that are event sponsors to be able to register on the same site. And you don't want people to actually go to the registration page to select. I mean, you would want to have somehow have a button, you know, athletes press this button, uh, events press this button. And you press this button, they would go to their own tailored registration page. Now, can you imagine doing that with code? You would have to go and figure things out and so on. Uh, what I'm doing now is basically is I'm assuming that the registration uh, URL has is extended with the type of person uh, actually uh, registering. So if it's an athlete, it'll be type equals athlete. If it's event, it'll be type equals event, for example. And what I'm doing here is just before I'm displaying the registration form, okay, I'm basically checking if this type, I'm getting the type from here, and I'm checking if that's an athlete or an event. So this is the actual condition. And what I'm doing then is if the condition is true, I continue and do, and do two, two, uh, two actions, actually. I use the jQuery method. And I basically, what I do here is I push the type value I got from the URL. I push it to the CB underscore account type field through jQuery. And I also fire the trigger of change. And I do that. I'll show you why later. And follow up, I do a CSS inline. I basically hide the actual field that I had on the registration page that asked the user for the type. So I combined two very small pieces of code, and I have a great, uh, a great result, which is very cool, clean, and no hacking anywhere. So for example, what, what I would let, let's see this in, in, in uh, real life here. If I go to the registration page, I see here that I have an account type. Okay. Uh, I've also implemented, I have a, there's a plugin called CB Conditional, which allows you to conditionally show one field based on another field value. So for example, here you see just account type. If I type athlete, you see it added an athlete record right underneath. If I just get rid of the E, <laughs> it'll hide <laughs> the record. If I type here, instead of athlete event, it has an event name. Okay. Now, I don't really want to show this to the end user. So what I did is I created uh, two links. You can imagine these two links could be nice fancy buttons on your website, you know, with graphics and so on. So what this link does, if you can read underneath, it basically appends the type equals athlete and the type equals event in the URL of the registration page. So if I click this, I automatically go to the same registration page. I see the athlete record, but I've hidden, because I use CSS to hide the actual account type field that I had before that I used to type in event or, uh, or the, uh, the athlete. So it was a simple, was a simple two lines of little code, you know, pushed in the right places, the right trigger, you have a very good end result with no need to really code. And we use this a lot because you can never really uh, have a system that's fully configurable. You always need to tweak. You always need to add logic. Right? You always need to hack a workaround. We don't want to hack. So we want to create the tools to be able to allow users to do correct workarounds. Connection action, again, allows you to automatically connect users. You connect is like uh, be a friend with another and so on. Okay. Email action, I showed you an example of that already. And one example we used for uh, a specific uh, use case is they wanted they, they, ha they had a new site, a membership, basically, 
the membership club had a new site, and they wanted people that started registering to be able to identify if they are paid members or not. And if they check the click a, a button, a, a check the uh, a check box on the registration page that yes, I'm already I am a member, then automatically an email would be sent out with the user data that was put in the registration form, and sent to uh, a, an official in the club that actually did the checking and upgraded the account if needed. So that's done automatically. There's no reason to do anything uh, offline or anything. We just notify the person that needs to get the email with the information, and they can handle the offline uh, workflow as they want. And this is the other case I'm, sent, I'm told you that uh, want to send email from another server. So basically what we're doing here is if uh, somebody registered with a Gmail account, we'll use a Gmail account to send them an email telling him, you know, just to make, thanking him for the registration, and please check the spam box because sometimes <laughs> Gmail puts things in spam with instructions on how to notify Gmail that that's not the case and so on. So it's kind of fighting back because uh, the help desk of Gmail or Google, I think it's the most organized electronic bureaucracy there is. <laughs> uh, okay, field action, this is kind of simple. I mean, you want to basically populate some field values depending on other field values. You might want to concatenate two things. You might want to uh, add things. I mean, this is kind of simple. You don't really... Uh, I mean, you can set the field value. For example, you can say if somebody uh, subscribes to a group or to a, a specific subscription plan, then checkbox a field that he's a subscriber. This way you can use a user list to filter all the subscribers in the front end with, uh, with uh, Community Builder. Uh, there's infinite use cases here. I mean, you just have to think about what you want and find the right way of doing it. It might not be just one right way. It might be a, quite a few. Uh, we also have integration with Flyspray. I don't know if you know about Flyspray. Flyspray is like a project management bug system, open source. And we had an integration with it. So basically, uh, you can create a single sign-on. Basically, you can push uh, username, password to the other database system. And this way, people could log in to the uh, other application using the same credentials as your website. And you can even create an action that if they change their password, it'll move the change to the other website also. Just some examples. I mean, I've used this and it works pretty good, actually. And it even interfaces, it allows you uh, to interface. It picks up all the groups from uh, the project, project groups. So in Flyspray, you can have various project teams and project groups, and you can push people out to specific groups. Group dive action, again, you, uh, you can automatically join, have a user join a group, leave a group, create a new group on the fly. This is, uh, I've used this again. Let's, uh, we had a, a political site where it allowed people to register and they select their voting area. And what happens is when they select a voting area, if there isn't a group for their voting area, this action will create the group, and it'll also add them to the group. <coughs> so this way, at the end of the day, people on your site have already been clustered into groups of interest. Again, these are just ideas to inspire you because I'm sure you will have use cases where you will need to do that extra step and you don't know where to start or how to start and how to get a handle of things. We have K2 action that basically allows you to synchronize users between uh, Community Builder and K2. Uh, you can specify the user group, gender, all that stuff. Kunena action, it's kind of poor right now. It just creates a new forum category for you. I'm, we're going to be extending this. Uh, but again, if you know the database structure of the extension, you can actually do an SQL action on that and go directly bypassing. But if there's an API, it's probably better to use the API because it'll probably be maintained a little longer than the database structure, hopefully. Uh, login, logout action, it's just what it does. I mean, how many, how many times did we want 
as soon as people confirm their email to automatically log them in. Right? Click, confirm, and log in. You can do this simply like this. Very easy. Uh, here's the example. Basically, we're basically saying uh, log in with the username and then redirect directly to the profile page <laughs> and welcome the user with a nice message on the page. Again, cleanly. Uh, Community Builder has its uh, own menu structure in the uh, profile. We have a menu action that allows us to push new menus to a user profile. So one example is, let's assume uh, we've identified a, a user website field, so where people can specify their website, put the URL there. We want to push that as a menu on their profile. So we can say, go to my site. It could be a little menu, go to my site, that goes to the site that is in the URL that the user has specified. Just one use case, but and I have that here also online. Uh, as I mentioned before, that Community Builder not only uh, ver integrates very, very nicely with uh, Kunena and UDDIM, which is a private messaging extension, uh, we could do a private messaging action, action. So instead of sending an email, no reason to go through email, send a private message internally. Again, just concentrate on what you want to say and who you, who you want to say it to. Privacy action uh, is, we have a new, uh, an updated plugin actually, privacy, and you can basically specify at a field level or a profile level or a tab level who sees what. And you can do this on the fly. So you have to think of the use cases, I mean, <laughs> how you want to handle this. Query action is very powerful, again. As I mentioned, I mean, you want, might want to, let's assume that we have an external, could be an external database or an internal database. Let's, let's assume that we want to push all our uh, registrations, not only to the Joomla database, but push relative information to an external database that's used for label printing, for example, or user list, whatever, that somebody else handles, and you don't want that, those people to be in your Joomla website. Okay, so this is a simple action basically that runs the query okay, into uh, a demo table. Basically, we have three fields here, just the user ID, username, and email, and we just push the values from the registration. We could have had name, address, whatever we had there. And this is internal right now. It could have been external. <coughs> if it was external, we'd have to give the, my, the uh, SQL uh, URL and so on. So again, you can do anything you want here. And you can do a second query on top, and a third, and a fourth, depending on what you need to do. And you can also trigger not only off the registration act, uh, event, but after the user profile event. You might want to push an update. Instead of an insert, you might want to update the record. So again, it's, it's, it's a tool. It's a Swiss Army knife tool that allows you to basically implement what you want to implement as cleanly as possible without really coding. Redirect action is just that. You want to, let's assume, uh, if somebody logs in and they've basically stated that they're uh, under 18, for example, <laughs> you want to redirect them to a specific page that tells them what they're allowed to do and what they're not allowed to do, or whatever you want to do like that. I mean, you can do anything you want. <coughs> I have an example here. No problem. This is a new action. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't have an example, but I thought of a dozen use cases. How many times have we wanted to create a new member? And we don't want to do it really manually in the back end or in the front end. So what this action does is it allows us to create a new user in our, in our database. So let's assume somebody purchases a family membership and he's entitled to child members. We could automatically create those child members based on usernames that the person has provided in his uh, uh, in his CB field profile in the CB profile fields. So he becomes a, a member. The system will look at child one, child two credentials, create, and that's it. It's cool. I need that. 
you, you, <laughs> you, you like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very powerful. And it, there's so much you can do. Uh, request action, again, it's like calling a URL that has a script on the other end. And it, you can actually show what's returned or, or not. So you can basically uh, pass variables through the URL again. There's lots of stuff you can do. User, act, user group action, I mean, you might want to automatically add a new group to a user or remove a new ACL group from the user. You can do that easily. Again, it'll pick up all your Joomla ACL groups and allow you to select. Or even, you can even select to create a new user group on the fly, and you select which, where, where the parent is, for example. Virtumart activities for Virtumart 2.0, 2.x, whatever, basically allows you to synchronize again your users. You can synchronize fields. And this is what I'm envisioning for CVCRM also, something where you can have the uh, CV fields on one side and the C CB fields on the other and try to synchronize that. OK, uh, those, that's the end, basically, of the auto action description. I mean, you see lots of things there. Uh, there's something similar called <coughs> the SQL action for CB subs, which is basically what happens is you can identify five actions, up to five SQL actions, that are executed uh, when a specific subscription event starts or ends. So you, wanna, you might want to say, if a subscription starts, let's execute this SQL action to add that person to an external newsletter, for example, that's not in your Joomla website. Uh, and similar, in a similar fashion, we have the URL action will basically uh, execute uh, a URL string. You can pass it variables and let it take care of the logic. This is if you have something in place already. I mean, you just take advantage of it, basically. Uh, Community Builder has a, a, a long list of field types. But you can extend those. And one of the extensions we have is an, a CB query field, where we basically uh, install the plugin and then create as many query fields as we want. What could a query field, what could it be? It could be uh, some examples here. I might want to be able to want to count the number of gallery, CB gallery items this user has and display it. I might want to count the number of users on the site for some reason and display it as a field. Uh, I might want to filter the number of users by the users that have uh, this, uh, a similar email with the same one that the user has. I mean, you could just think of millions of things to do here. <coughs> and these are just a sample queries that we can look at if you want. Again, the query could be internal, in which case it uses the uh, hash sign for the uh, prefix, or it could be external, in which case you can still specify a prefix, <laughs> and it'll use that. And the last, basically, uh, is another community builder field <coughs> type. It's called a database lookup field. There's a, lot, there's a lot of need. I mean, a lot of people have asked, I don't want people, I only want people to put values in this field that I've already pre-specified. So somebody goes to your registration page and it asks activation code, okay? And we want that when the person types in something in the activation code to actually look up that value in a database of codes. If it finds it, mark it as used or do whatever you want to do and then authenticate the field and you, he can move on. If, if it's not authenticated, he will never register. And the way, the way we've implemented this is basically is we, al we have three fields, basically. A query check field, a query update field, and a query rollback field. Think about this. I mean, when somebody populates a value in this uh, field, we want to make sure that value is actually found in the database table. So we put, a, we put a, uh, an SQL statement that actually looks for that value and returns yes or no. Uh, if it's found, uh, we want to have an SQL query, what to do, how to update that table to mark it as used, for example. And if some, for some reason we have to roll back, if we've marked it as used already and something happened on the registration form later on, 
we don't want to keep that marked as used even though it's not used because we roll back the registration of the user. So these three specific actions we're using, and these are just examples. Let's assume we had a code table that contains the codes, which is basically the code and the user ID. Basically, it could be a code and zero if it's not used, or the actual non-zero user ID of the user that's used it. And these are just sample cases that it, it's logical. I mean, these are just the examples. But you can do anything you want. You can uh, define your own logic. You can define your own table. You can define uh, account for code. The same code could be used up to five times, for example, and, <laughs> and specify uh, how it's used and so on. <coughs> OK. This is the last slide. I, I think I went pretty fast here. <laughs> Uh, but uh, as you can see, it's very uh, intriguing, I would say, to uh, start thinking about what you want to do and just do it without spending so much time on coding or figuring out where to put something and so on. So this, this basically uh, set of tools and the framework, they work together very nicely. and. We're going to be extending this. I mean, I've already asked if it would be nice to be able to listen to Joomla events also there. It would be, it would be a cool, to cool tool. And it's not difficult to do, actually. We can just have a Joomla plugin that basically bridges <laughs> the event to, uh, uh, to the system. Uh, so this is uh, all I have. I mean, I'm, you're welcome to ask any type of questions you want. Uh, Yes. Um, the prefix is can combine logically. Meaning, uh, when you have two triggers, um, both have to be true. Or I'm really not. I can't hear you. Sorry. If you if you select more than one trigger. Right. In your, in your for for example, for, let me give you an example. I select. I can select a front end trigger and a back end trigger. And then you can choose if both have to be uh, true. No, no. It's either. Either, 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 either. You can't fire two triggers. I mean, you, you, uh, event fires one at, one at a time. You just, it's just a convenience to be able to write a single action that handles more than one trigger. Right? Okay. Thank you very much, guys.